Well, today I thought we'd have a look at something a bit more straightforward. That is the basics of using the VSE. Yeah, if anybody's uh, ever tried to uh, use the VSE to uh, create tutorials and that's kind of, that kind of thing for their videos, they'll uh, soon realise that it can be an awkward or challenging sort of thing to get to grips with. But if it's a straightforward um, cut job and just slicing together bits of uh, media, it really isn't too hard. But it's just getting those basics of the right size, uh, right dimensions for your rendering and the right kind of formats that can be a bit of a challenge. Anyway, so let's get to it. I'll swap back to the video editing layout or the VSE layout at the moment. I've got the timeline at the bottom here and I've got a couple windows open. I might just consolidate those into one simple display. And I've started out with a preset values of um, 1080p, high definition generally. Um, but I've recorded a little dem demonstration tutorial uh, using um, uh, Screencast-O-Matic, which I'm using right now, uh, f to record an example of um, Auda using Audacity, a little freeware audio program. Anyway, um, as I recorded that, it gave me different dimensions, so let's have a quick look at what dimensions I got from that. So it's a H.264 codec, so it won't play terribly well, I don't think. We'll see how it goes. Uh, the screen size... It, whoops. Screen size is 1280 by 720. So let's change that. 1280 by 720. What else? And it runs at 10 frames per second. That's very important for um, for Blender. First of all, the resolution has to match because Blender will actively resize the image to whatever the project resolution is and that of course takes away computer cycles and makes it a bit slower. The other thing is the frame rate. If the frame rate is divergent, let's, uh, let's make it a bit larger, so I'll just make the timeline a bit longer. I wish this was in seconds, but it's in seconds down here, so you can see how long it is. One minute, let's make it twice as long. Uh, if I add, go down to strip, no, add, sorry, add movie, and we select, hmm, let me see, tutorials, demo media, here it is, Audacity demo. You can see that set at 30, uh, 24 frames per second, it seems to be that the audio is roughly twice as long as the video. Oh dear, the audio is the teal colored track. Um, that's because the audio will play back at a fixed duration and not a sample rate, whereas the video will play back at its sample rate or frame rate. Uh, therefore, at 10 frames per second, um, you place that onto a 24 frames per second speed and it will play half as long as what you want. That's Now I could add a speed effect to that but let's just alter the speed. So we can come down here and look for 10 frames per second. There is no 10 frames per second so we'll choose custom. And we type in 10 frames per second. We'll try add again, shift A, go to movie, audacity, Add movie strip and now you can see it's the same length as the audio and it runs out at about minute 44. Oh look how large it is up there if I press the home button it shrinks to fit and now when I play that There we go, so that plays quite well. I've got AV Sync turned on. If I turn on non-sync, let's see what happens. Oh, it's probably not going to be very demonstrative. At 10 frames per second, it's not really taxing my system at all. Uh, but what can happen if you have sync vision of somebody talking to camera or moving in front of the camera and the sound has to match, sometimes those things can get out of alignment and the sound comes a bit earlier than the pictures as it tries to decode them. If that's the case, make sure you have turned on AV Sync. And that'll throw away video frames in order to keep your sync up. Uh, another way to improve that would be to highlight your video track. Scroll down to Presync and maybe put in 10 frames of Presync and that, what that means is it will buffer a little bit ahead of the clip and make sure that it um, plays more smoothly. 
Okay, so we've got the all, our clip loaded in. Uh, what I might do is meta those together so that when I move the sound and the video around, they will uh, stick together and not lose sync. So let's go to strip and go make meta. Oops, try that again. I didn't select OK. Make strip meta. It says OK. Yes, please. Now it makes one separate strip. And now when I drag that around, the audio won't um, part company with the video. There we go. Now it's left a little bit of room at the beginning for a title. I've produced a title earlier. Oh, by the way, when I move these, I'm just uh, right mouse clicking somewhere on the click, clip or the strip and dragging it. Uh, see if I can make it a bit larger and you can see a bit better what I'm doing. You can also trim the beginning by clicking on the little head frame there with the right mouse button or clicking at the end with the right mouse button. And you can change its duration like this. You can see that there's a little faint strip there to show you the tail of the clip that you've just trimmed away. This is called a soft cut uh, and it allows you to stretch that back out. If you go the other way the grey area indicates a freeze frame at the back, so it will continue to perform a freeze frame at that point. Anyway, what we want to do is import uh, another title movie. Um, let's have a look at this demo title. Oh, it's not a movie. Maybe it's a frame sequence. Let's go add again. Let's go to image. Uh, yes, it's a frame sequence of about 25 frames, I think. So if we select A for all and click add image strip. Let's just see where it's going to go. Um, channel 4, maybe make it channel 5. Start frame. Oh, we want to start it at 1. And add image strip. And here is the title. Now you can see that that didn't play back very smoothly. It should be a smooth fade. That's because it's resizing the uh, the size of this image. Now I don't believe. Oh yes, here we go. Dimensions. So you can see up here our dimensions are 1280 by 720, but down here on this clip it is 1920 by 1080. So the VSE is dynamically resizing this strip as we go. I could have rendered out the correct dimensions, but I didn't think of that earlier. Now what I would like to do is make a freeze frame at the beginning, so I'll click and drag, or alternately I could select it and press the G key and drag it wherever I wanted to. Then I will click the big right click the head of the uh, strip and drag it back to create that freeze frame. There's that grey area, and I'll create another freeze frame at the end, so right click and drag out another freeze frame. Maybe enough for a dissolve. And now when I hit play, Alt A, freeze, and then it mixes up, and it has another freeze, and now I want to bring in my audio from over here. So what I would like to do perhaps is animate a dissolve here, so what we could do is we're going from this clip to this clip, so I'll click select this one first, and then I'll shift, add, select, so I'll shift and right mouse click on this one, and now I'll add an effect, so we'll look along here for uh, add, 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 sorry, add, Effect, there it is. We want to do a simple cross. Cross is a dissolve. Now it starts at the top and it dissolves through to the vision underneath. Press Alt A play. This is all audacity. Right. It's as simple as that. And go along here, find what we want to cut out. Let me see, further down here, I'd do something wrong. to cut, trim that there, so I'm going to press K for cut, and I'll come back in a bit later. Zoom in with the mouse button, or you can zoom in with these handles on the bottom here. Select the clip I want to cut. And we'll go through to strip, cut soft, so it allows us to have handles if we want to. 
and then we can remove this strip by pressing delete, erase strip. I can click and drag this down and see how it turns red. Now when I let go, it'll snap to the end. I actually let go, I actually press the left mouse button to make it let go. So let's play over that. Comes the edit. very quiet though. Okay, so play it through. And maybe I can demonstrate how we ch change the volume as well. It's quite quiet so... Now I can't access the audio from here so I'm going to have to step into this, this um, meta clip and I can do that by pressing the, let me see if it's available here, tab key for edit, just like editing any other clip in, uh, eh. anyway, tab key, just like editing anything else in Blender, should be at the same point, it is, so I'll select the audio, remember it's the teal coloured clip, uh, come up here to the audio and the uh, whoops audio is here sorry I'll put a keyframe there by pressing I ooh doesn't like keyframes in um, in uh, oh, let me see this is a meta clip yes doesn't like keyframes in meta clips so we'd have to unpack this meta clip in order to get to work so let's hop back to here we might drag this down G Y couple clips and we'll uh, unmake meta, so Alt G, unmake meta clip, and try this again. Insert, oh no, now it's broken. There's a bug in Blender apparently that uh, once you meta and then unmeta some audio, it doesn't like um, adding the uh, keyframe to the audio. So sorry about that. Or well, maybe what we could do, I'm going to cut that, press K for cut, I'll leave the audio on this side at one level but I'll raise the audio on the other side so I'll make it say four times as loud. It's very very quiet isn't it? It's very off mic, I'll make it maybe ten times as loud. Skip down here a bit. There you go. Oh, too loud. Now, highlight that clip, press K again, highlight the next clip, because I'll change this back to one, and so the audio will dip back down again. There you go, so that's a quick intro. Of course, you could just fade these if the keyframing values work. <laughs> anyway, there's a quick example of the basics of uh, generating um, a video in Blender. If you wanted to add a uh, fade to black at the end for the video at least you will go add uh, let me see an effect strip go to color it generates a, a black strip for you if you highlight the clip and press shift s it snaps to the wherever the playhead is the little green indicator now you can see that because the color strip is on top it's obscuring whatever's below I would need to perhaps go to the end of our video track underneath <coughs> I'll set the opacity as a keyframe, so go I for a keyframe, uh, come back down here, make this zero, so fade it out, and press I again. And now when I come back and play over the top, it creates a fade from this video track to this video track. I go somewhere in the black, down to the timeline, press E for end, and that changes our render range. See that little black line in there? That's our render range, so that the renderer will now render up to this point, and you can see that here, 1087, that's what that is there, 1087. If I made it a bit longer, and press E again, that would update to 1100 and 1100. So there you go, a quick example of editing a tutorial that we've already recorded earlier on. Let's tidy, oh we don't want that audio in twice. <laughs> tidy that up.
G, Y key to constrain the vertical move and then I'll drag that back to there, let go.